Hey folks, it's Fernando doing our video for Mono Survivalist and this is going to be six items you should have for long-term power outages. It's a video I mentioned about doing before, forgot about it, one of you guys mentioned that I, that I forgot about doing it. That happens every once in a while folks, anything that I forgot about or any, especially any video you like me to do, any topic you like me to address, leave your comments below, I'll try to do my best to uh, take care of that. So, getting right into this. Before I even get started with the items, one of the things that I notice is the difference between going without power for a, few, a couple hours, maybe even a, a day or two, and going for six days. Uh, in, in Argentina, I was pretty used to it because um, power outages pretty much happened every every week, especially in summer, almost daily. You got you went for a few hours without power. At times, it, some years it was even worse. I, I think the most I went without electricity was four days. You know, maybe this time it, it was six days, and as as it usually happens with with these uh, little emergencies, it happens when least expected. When it happens when you just don't see how it's possible for that to happen to you. The thing is, I live in an area where it's power is extremely reliable, but there was a mix up with a power company. Uh, some guy was supposed to do something that he ended up not doing, and there was a confusion there and by the time everything got sorted out the thing is six days had gone by I, I talked with the power company uh, a, a weekend was there in the middle long story short six days without power even when there wasn't any catastrophic disaster or anything so these things are always important to keep in mind so getting right to it six items you should have of course first of all flashlights that goes without saying but uh, a few thoughts here on what type of lights are more useful the ones that i've used these days that uh, were the, the most handy of course i've often mentioned the importance of your edc light uh, a small compact single cell light is the way i usually go for and these are great but sometimes especially for a, a long-term power outage you want something brighter what i ended up using the most these days were these these 18650 lithium ion battery uh, powered lights these are through night TN12, the old version and the newer one. Um, the thing I, I do with this, these ones, given that they can stand on the tail, which is a, a feature I always like having in my lights, is just putting it in a, in a medium mode, maybe 500 lumens or something like that, and putting it like that in a corner towards the, the ceiling and since most uh, you know, ceilings are, are white they reflect nicely that light. I, I have lanterns and I didn't even end up breaking out those. I, I left them uh, in storage because this was more more convenient and just good enough. Now uh, through nights were good. This is the one that my, my wife ended up using as her little uh, personal flashlight during the during those days, these this is a, the a Lumen Top Copper Prince. Check out that toning. I did a video about this before. Just a beautiful flashlight, but very functional as well. 18650 lithium battery, a thousand lumens in medium mode, just pointing towards the the ceiling. You have the moon mode there if you don't want to wake up everyone at night. Just useful stuff that we talk about all the time, but you know these times you end up using it and see how useful they actually are. Also headlamps. I have a, a, a bunch here, these three uh, headlamps. The, the nice thing about headlamps is that when you go for so long without electricity, you still have to do stuff. You, know, you still have house chores, cooking, that sort of thing, fixing stuff cleaning guns, whatnot, and these direct light exactly where you need it and leaves both hands free, which you're not, you know, giving up one hand just to hold the, the flashlight. The Zebra light, just one of my EDC lights in the rotation, as you see, it has a little bit of, of wear there, but with the head strap, it just becomes a fantastic headlamp as well. So that's it in terms of flashlights. You may have a ton of them. The thing is, guys, some folks don't have even, even one single flashlight in their house. I know it sounds crazy, but it is the, the way it is. Some people don't have even one, or they have one crappy little flashlight that's quite awful. Number two, of course, batteries. A, a, a bunch of them, plenty. This is just for, for you know, so as to illustrate. The, the point, but I have a ton of batteries, and, and you should as well. Uh, primary batteries, rechargeable ones. I think I went through maybe one third of my rechargeable batteries without even touching the primary ones. 
rechargeable batteries are great because when you have sporadic uh, periods of, of power, you know, going so it goes in and out and you know, some maybe you go for a day without electricity the following one you have or a couple days and then you know, for that sort of thing you have the advantage of recharging your batteries or maybe using it with some other uh, equipment that you have you can recharge your batteries without eating through the primaries um, a little tip here the um, the ones from uh, IKEA these uh, Lada rechargeable ones these are made in japan they're quite good and very affordable as well so keep that in mind from ikea made in japan good batteries i think it's probably maybe the same as the yellow loop ones but much cheaper uh so yeah that's that's basically have a, <laughs> a ton of batteries because it may not seem like it but when you go for several days without electricity you do eat through them quite fast the different modes in the flashlights it's also very useful now one of the things immediately that we, we saw is that without electricity, the, the kitchen uh, burner works with, you know, it's one of those electric top burner things, you know, that uses electricity, no power, no cooking with, with that thing. Um, I had actually nearby my little Super Cat uh, 32 alcohol uh, burner, and I used that at first for making uh, boiling water for some tea, and it worked quite well. I mean, if you have nothing else, this is actually quite uh, nice to have. I mean, it allows you to prepare and cook food. I did it with this, and it worked. Now, for longer uh, periods of time without power, one of the nice things, and moving towards number three, that you should definitely have is one of these portable uh, gas uh, stoves. I mean, a big use everywhere, most gas stations, most uh, stores have them, the most common thing in the world. It's not even one of those fancy camping ones that are lighter, smaller. No, just one of those old <laughs> gas stoves, you know, yeah, just like that. The nice thing about this thing is, is unlike the smaller ultra light ones, these ones give you a good surface and it's quite easy. Just you twist there the knob, turn it on, burns like a normal gas a burner. And these things are cheap. I think like for 10 bucks, 15, you find them pretty much everywhere. The bottles are also, when you find them on sale, one buck, two bucks. I have like a dozen of these and I should probably buy a few more because it's so damn handy when the power goes out, you just place it on the same spot where you have your glass uh, burner thing, you just place that on top and you keep on cooking as you always do, using your same pots and all. So very, very handy. Uh, without any cares as to save fuel or anything, I would go for, one of these would last maybe two, three days, stretching a little bit with trying to be careful not to waste it, maybe four days of being careful, but you know, affordable enough so as to have several of these things. So this is number, Three. Number four is something that you should have, a little bit more expensive maybe, depending on what you buy, but a power inverter for your, for your car. I don't have a, a large uh, generator or anything, because most of how I, th I have things set up, I don't actually need one. For example, in, w w when cooking food, I have lots of, of rice and uh, lentils, which cook rather fast. And for my fridge stuff, um, that same stuff does not require uh, refrigeration. And you know, for those days when you don't have any electricity, just go not having as much fresh stuff in the fridge. One of the nice tips that it works very well, I did this in Argentina all the time, is having a few bottles of water in your freezer and when power goes down you bring those bottles uh, of uh, ice uh, water from the freeze uh, from the fr uh, freezer to the fridge basically turning your your fridge into an ice box uh, an ice box in the old days was just that a box with a large chunk of ice a guy would drive around the streets with, with selling ice people would buy uh, ice and put it in in their ice box so it's basically the same concept and using a tarp just to cover everything up nicely you can stretch whatever is in your fridge for two three days depending on uh, how hot the weather is in your location just one of those things that stretches your supplies in the fridge for for a few more days usually you, you rarely go for so so long uh, without electricity in a place where where the grid is reliable it's one of those freak things that happens very rarely but when it does you learn a thing or two along the way 
So the, the inverter, the thing is you connect it to your, your vehicle. In my case, I have a, an SUV with somewhat of a little bit larger battery. And you know, you can, I can even run my, my fridge with this thing. I, I didn't do it because again, I have everything set up so as to not need it as much. So uh, using the, um, the shelf uh, stable um, uh, food I usually have, didn't need it and whenever we, we bought something fresh we would eat it right away and and that was that but you know for for your uh, laptop computer so as to turn on the the router for for uh, wi-fi and internet this thing just w was a godsend very handy for that sort of thing it just connects i keep it here with, with the original box because it has some data some information on how much appliances use and as you see there, it says for um, a bench grinder, 300, 500 watts, computer 200. My computer, my laptop uses less than 100. I think it's 80. Uh, the fridge is also very low as well. So yeah, there it says laptop, 1695. That's pretty accurate. But again, just you know enough so as to run your things. And for example, I would use the computer for a couple hours, and then uh, I had to run errands or take the kids to school or whatnot. That would recharge the battery in the car. Got back home, everything was running fine. And it allows you to um, get online, get some work done, and, and check things out. There's a, a model that's a little bit small. I think it's 200 or 300 watts. We connect di directly to the um, the lighter, the electric lighter in your car, that, that plug. And that's a little bit handier because this requires you to pop the hood so as to connect directly to the battery. But it's you know a little bit less power, just I think it's still enough. But enough about that, just um, one of those additions. When you find, a, find one for a good price, same for this little um, stove, throw there one in, in the kit. That was number four. Number five, your battery banks. These are just handy all around, even you know in, in normal times. Uh, a battery pack for, especially if you're going out you know, on a trip, taking a lot of, of, uh, of photographs with, with your cell phone, going through a battery a little bit more than usual. Having these to top up your, your, your cell phone is, is great. And one of the things we learned during these six days without power, now that we have you know, more family members with phones, is everyone is looking to see where they can recharge their phones. So battery banks are, are great. So to, to have in, in that case, especially this one, the, the Waka Waka power that I reviewed before has a solar panel and leaving it outside from the morning, I think in the afternoon, it, it wasn't a hundred percent, but uh, three lights, very doable. So leaving it out, it allowed me to recharge one phone per day with this combined with the inverter and the charger in the car when, when driving around we we kept our phones running during that during that period of time um, this one is quite nice I mean I've had it for a few years now no problems whatsoever recharged even with very little light uh, you I charged it even when it was cloudy about to rain that little light there blinks you see how even now you see how it blinks now that's recharging at, at its lowest level it does three blinks when there's a intense sunlight but even with this it's already charging very nice little gadget right there so number five and finally number six i don't have it here with me because it's a uh, store and i didn't even bring it out because of uh, the warmer weather but do get yourself do yourself a favor get yourself uh, a kerosene heater uh, I've done videos about this before. They're available on Amazon. I'll try to leave links below if I, if I find a, a good model on Amazon. The, the Coronas, you know, get yourself one. Especially for those of you guys that li live in, in, in cold climates, the kerosene heater basically stops you from freezing to death in cold weather locations when you don't have electricity and you actually need that so as to uh, run your, your heater, the heat in your house. The, the kerosene heater is great for that. Also works for cooking as well, certain models. Uh, I'd rather have this one. I mean, um, the portable gas stove is more handy, it's more convenient for those, those things. Uh, the, the, the kerosene heater in some models you can cook, maybe a little bit more messy. 
but the, the key thing is that it keeps you warm and, and very efficiently so using just kerosene folks it's gonna be all for now i hope i did this video short enough 15 minutes that's gonna be all for now share like and subscribe to the channel see you in our next video have a great day